Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Summer of Carnage right here on the Venom Vlog. And this is our last review, uh, anything regarding the Absolute Carnage series, because today we're going to talk about three books, uh, two of which came out today, and I don't have the digital codes for. I actually decided just to buy them digitally because I, I'm giving away my whole Donnie Cates collection. If you haven't seen my live stream, episode three, I talk about it in there. I, you know, you know me. Not really been a big fan of uh, some of the stuff that Donny Cates has done, and I really don't care to continue to read the series past what's happening now. Um, I haven't been interested in it in some time, like since issue 12, I was like, eh, kind of falling out of this. It's kind of starting to, to you know, bore me a little bit. Um, and some of the concepts that I really like, I just haven't liked some of the execution on them. But I stuck with it, and I stuck through Absolute Carnage, and I just feel like that series ended in such a lackluster way that I feel, you know, kind of like I wasted a lot of money, even though some of the tie-ins were good and even the Venom issues with Dylan Brock was actually pretty good, uh, still not enough to keep me going. So uh, if you haven't watched my live stream in that one, I said that instead of getting rid of the comics, it, you know, or just selling them to the comic store, you know, try to get store credit or anything like that, uh, instead of doing something like that, I wanted to find a good home for them, for someone who would appreciate them. And, uh, and you know, and so I went and talked to my friend at work who has a little brother who's a big Venom fan and knows kind of what's going on in the Venom comics right now, but just doesn't have the money to buy any of it. So I'm going to give them issues one through 19 and all the tie-ins and everything that came in that Donny Cates and uh, Ryan Stegman and Yvonne Coelho and everyone did. Um, I'd rather find the book a good home with someone who would enjoy it as opposed to discarding it some other way or getting store credit for it. I'd rather find it a good home where the collection can stay all together. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go donate all these books uh, to my friend or give them to him as like a Christmas, you know, gift so he can give to his little brother. And um, that way I just feel like some good's coming out of this, you know, uh, because I know the books, you know, I haven't enjoyed them, but I know he will. And uh, and so I want to kind of pass that on to someone who will enjoy them. So I'll do probably make like a, uh, you know, I probably won't vlog that at all, actually, because I don't want to like get him involved and his little brother involved um, because, uh, you know, I just for all purposes and new you know uh, youtube purposes where you can't really film kids and stuff uh you know unless you make your show a kids channel so obviously i can't you know vlog it and share that with you guys uh, but maybe i'll take a picture of it and put it on instagram so you guys can see maybe the look on his face <laughs> when he gets like a stack of books uh that are venom and carnage related so in this episode uh i want to wrap up this absolute carnage thing there was Two ending issues, kind of. Well, there was a tie-in that came out last week called Captain Marvel that we didn't talk about yet. Um, then there's also Venom 20, which came out this week, which is kind of the epilogue to Absolute Carnage. And then there's Scream Number 1, which is kind of the beginning of the aftermath of Absolute Carnage. And I bought Scream Number 1, like I said, and Venom 20 in digital form. So I don't have the digital codes to give away. I do have the digital code to give away for this, and also our friend Lonely Symbiote, uh, she gave me a digital code to give to you guys for uh, Venom Double Trouble, I think it was. So uh, I will give that code out, and actually we'll give that out right now. Boom, there's the digital code to uh, Venom Double Trouble, and then after that code goes away, uh, I'll put the code for Captain Marvel right after it. So those are our two digital codes, um, so the first person to put those codes in gets those comic books, so enjoy. And uh, and uh, thank you for supporting the show. We're on episode 447 right now of the Venom Vlog. It's almost our two-year anniversary. Well, it actually, we passed our two-year anniversary. I think it was like November 5th or, you know, like early November is when we posted our first Venom Vlog. But then it was like a whole month until we posted our second episode uh, because I think the second episode opens with me film, you know, filming myself cooking either Thanksgiving dinner or something along those lines. Uh, so our second episode didn't air till like early December. Um, so we're kind of coming up on the two-year anniversary of our second episode. But uh, it's been great. It's nice to, you know, end the month of November. Uh, my goal is to try to end November with 450 episodes. We might go early into next week, do, uh, you know, with the 450th episode. Uh, but, uh, but it's just so great to be here and, and pump out 450 Venom episodes. Uh, you know, some Morbius and some Spider-Verse stuff in there too, and, you know, Carnage stuff. Uh, but it's so great, and even Spider-Man. But it's still so great to cover that much content in just two years, and uh, that's what I want to keep moving forward with in Season 4. So Season 4 is going to focus on Flash Thompson. We aren't going to actually review a lot of new books when they come out. Uh, I, I kind of want to put that on the back burner because we have a lot of movie news that's going to be coming soon, and the original intent of this show and purpose of it was to follow the Tom Hardy Venom movie, and that's what I want to do with the second one. So I want to make sure I have plenty of time to cover news and information that comes out for the movie, and then also go back and, and look at some Eddie Brock stories we haven't covered yet 
and all the Flash Thompson stuff, which there is a ton. Uh, so uh, we got a lot of content for next season. So that's not going to leave a lot of room for reviewing new Venom books. Um, I might talk about them sometimes, or we might mention them in live streams if, I, if I'm reading any of them. But right now I have no plans to even buy any of them. Uh, past Scream number one, I'm probably not going to keep reading the series. Uh, same with the, the Ravencroft stuff. I'm probably not going to get any of those. And then Venom 21 and onward, I'm probably not going to buy either. I'll probably just wait till Comixology puts the graphic novels on sale for, you know, $2.99 or $3.99. Um, I'd rather do that um, and, you know, than, uh, than pick it up every month and support something that I'm just kind of lukewarm about, especially when money's tight and there are other comic books that I want to get back to reading again. So I hope you guys understand that. So with this five minute intro out of the way, uh, let's dive in. I, the reason I talked a lot at the front here is because I actually don't have a lot to say about some of these issues, especially this Captain Marvel one. We'll start here. And you already got the digital code, so hopefully whoever got those books, let me know your reviews of those books down in the comments below. Uh, so Captain Marvel, um, it is written by, uh, let me see here, uh, it's written by Emily Ryan Lerner, who actually does a pretty good job. I'm not a big Captain Marvel fan, and this isn't because I'm some, you know, comic skater or Brie Larson hater or anything like that. Uh, it has nothing to do with any of that stuff. Um, I just, uh, I never, I grew up not an Avengers kid. I, I think the only Marvel stuff I read, Captain Marvel stuff, was Marvel in like the 80s, um, and then uh, and then I think later on his death or whatever. Uh, but uh, I only know Carol as the person who kind of gave Rogue her powers in the comics uh, because I grew up a big X Men fan. So I'm only kind of aware of Carol, and we've talked about that in past episodes where I don't really know the character at all. And uh, and the movie it it ranked my lowest favorite Marvel movie. But I didn't think it was that bad of a movie. Like, I was like, eh, it was fine. Like, I mean, but that's how I feel about most Marvel movies is that, eh, they're just fine. And so, like, so on the scale of Marvel movies, it wasn't my favorite. It, like, I think she was at the bottom and then Spider-Man Homecoming was right above. And I was having trouble deciding which one I liked least. Um, so, uh, so those can kind of flip back and forth depending on the day with me. But still, I don't, I mean, I'm not. I don't know the character and I don't really, I'm not a, a big fan of the character because I don't have a ton of exposure to her. Uh, so when I read this, I was like, okay, I'm kind of, I kind of get, you know, what's going on. I think, uh, the, uh, Emily who wrote this did a pretty good job for someone like me who just has a insulary knowledge of the character. I was like, eh, not bad. I'm, I'm, you know, I think there's potential with Carol. I just don't, I don't know if a lot of people have reached it, you know, but then again, I haven't personally read stuff, so I can't give you my personal opinion on that. So, uh, so it's, you know, it's kind of, I feel like it's unfair to really write the character when I don't really know the character. Um, but uh, I guess she has this cat. It's like, like in the movie, it's a flurkin and, uh, and it's called Chewbacca. She named it Chewie and, uh, and it gets possessed as we saw in one of those little back backup issues or one of those like little one page, uh, you know, uh, absolute carnage stories. Her cat got possessed by a Carnage symbiote. Uh, why? I don't know. I guess because Carnage wanted like a Flurkin thing on its side, you know, to, to help fight the heroes. Uh, and it is powerful, the Flurkin. It can, uh, it grows like tentacles out of its mouth and it can eat someone or something whole. So I guess it was just looking for that. Like, oh, I, good, I could have like, um, not even a watchdog, but like a watch cat, I guess. So the imagery in this is really good. I actually like some of the artwork in this. Uh, it's it's like with the character, hu the human characters, their faces are kind of simplified, kind of cartoonish. Uh, but the detail in some of the the creature design is really great. By um, the artist is Andrea Bricardo, and uh, yeah, really liked it. And Andrea Bricardo also did most of their inks with uh, LeBeau Underwood as as the other inker that did some of this. So um, yeah, it's 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 nice. It's a it's a pretty looking book. But <clears throat> I guess my biggest critique of it is that I, I, it serves no purpose. Um, and that's the only downside. Cause I'm like, well, I think the writing team did a pretty good job or the, you know, the writer and, and stuff did a pretty good job on the beats and, um, the art isn't bad, but uh, the story it ha has it really means nothing to the absolute carnage, uh, you know, continuity and storyline. Like, okay, her cat got possessed and then she gets swallowed by her cat and she has to fight the carnage symbiote inside her cat. But every time she punches it, it hurts the cat. Or the flurkin. So uh, so she has to do that. And then she has to, of course, get out of the cat. And then take the symbiote off the cat. And then destroy it. And then she decides that she's going to go. Um, which is nice. At the end, she kind of get we get a Jessica Drew appearance. A spider woman. Which is it's always great to see Jessica. And uh, and she goes and uh, and her her friend Phyllis, I guess, comes in at one point too. But, uh, but Drew, you know, she goes talk to Jessica Drew. And she's like, hey, look, 
uh, I'm going to go fight Carnage and, you know, Moonstar is going to be there or whatever, or like a uh, um, Firestar is going to be there and uh, Cloak and Dagger are going to be there. And so, um, and I'm like, how does she know all this? Like, how does she know those characters specifically are going to be there? Because don't they teleport her right into the final battle? But again, it's the continuity. It's the editors just like not paying attention to anything that they do. Um, and she ends the book by going into the city to fight, you know, all these symbiotes, but you don't even see like, you know, uh, Cloak and Dagger, all of them in the street too. Why would you though? Because they teleported right from their room um, in the last issue with them and right into the, the moment of Absolute Carnage 5. And I noticed that they had Scream with them and Carol, but I was like, how did they recruit Carol? Not that it's that important, obviously to the story, but then it's like, well, if you're going to put Carol in the book and draw her into the final issue and then not show her do anything, uh, then like, why make her part of the story? And that's how I felt about this. I was just like, what was her purpose? Like, what, what did, why did she need to be in this story? I feel like this is again, one of those editorial mandates where they're like, Hey, we want Captain Marvel to be in on this event. And everyone who was writing it was like, how do we make her part of the event? And then the editors like figure it out, <laughs> you know? And, and then they just did the laziest thing possible, which is just tell a random story with her where she doesn't really and it says to be concluded in absolute carnage five and then if you go if you read this if you're a carol danvers fan and you read just this you're like hey i'm not gonna read absolute carnage i don't know anything about it i don't like those characters uh but oh wow it's you know it's gonna pull me in because i'm a captain marvel fan so you pick this up you read it and you go you know what i do want to see her fight carnage let's go pick up absolute carnage number five because that's what the book says and then you go buy that and you read that and you see one panel of Carol in it. So, like, what what fans are you helping here? Like, uh, okay, you want to pull in Captain Marvel fans to the event. You got them to buy your $5 book and then another $5 book in Absolute Carnage 5. But then you just disappointed them, too. Just like you disappointed, you know, half the fan base. And I talked about that in my live stream, how after Absolute Carnage 5, it was kind of nice to see not everyone love it. And not because I want the book to, you know, and Donny Cates and everyone to not be successful at what they're doing. I like that people like their stuff. And I felt like I was like with a couple of you who agree with some of my critiques, I felt like, all right, we're a small niche that don't like it. That's fine. You know, it's, we're not hurting anybody. I don't care. I'm not trying to like raise an uprising against Donny Cates and Marvel because I don't like their Venom book. I don't care if it's selling, that's good for the character. So I was like, all right, I don't mind being in the minority here. Uh, but now I feel like it's, I'm not anymore. After that issue five, I feel like there is a divide um, of people who felt cheated on that event. Um, and, uh, and that there is kind of a split growing. And so, you know, now it's on Marvel and Donnie and everyone to, you know, reconverge that split, uh, because the, the more that splits, uh, the worse it's going to get for sales and stuff. Um, so, and that's not good because obviously then uh, the, the Venom book that's currently going might go away sooner than like, like Tom King's Batman run ending sooner because he split the fans that could happen here if they're not careful. So, um, and I don't want that to happen. You know, obviously I want the character to keep going and I don't want, uh, you know, I mean, am I looking forward to another reboot of Venom at some point? Sure, but I'd rather Donny Cates tell his story and kind of get it out of the way. Even if I don't like it, I'd rather him, you know, go on and do it. Uh, but so for me, you know, when I read this, I was just like, ah, that's, that's what a bummer. Like I, I was like, uh, you just kind of shoehorned this character in this event to pull in those fans of the character and then you disappoint them in issue five and you don't even give Carol anything interesting to do so yeah i wasn't a fan of that that's my biggest critique of that book as a standalone book it's a neat little one-off story sure um but it just doesn't matter to absolute carnage it just added nothing to that uh event at all and uh, and then like i said it just it ends with you know uh with her going into the final battle and then you don't even see her in the final battle in issue five of absolute carnage so kind of pointless to me so that you know, those are my thoughts if you disagree that's fine let me know down below um but I do want to shift gears uh, to the, the two books that came out today, you know, which, I was, again, I don't have digital codes for because um, I'm not going to go buy the physical ones for these. I bought the digital ones just so I could wrap up this season, you know, easier and talk about all of them and, and them being the, you know, the wrap up and epilogue of Absolute Carnage and the, and the kind of the fallout with the Scream issue. So I'll start real quick with the Scream issue because I don't have a lot to say about it. It was pretty good. It's written by Clay Chapman, I think, uh, who was the one who wrote all those little one um, page backup stories leading up to Absolute Carnage where you saw the Flurkin get possessed and you saw like that journalist come into New York during the when Spider-Man had the black costume and he went off and, and they gave him his own book where um you know wh where he fought the white rat or he was like he went to jail you know for trying to kill the white rabbit and stuff. Um I really, you know, those were 
all little neat little things, but I felt like most of those were pointless. And then I think Clay Chapman wrote another one shot at some point, maybe even been the one with the journalist, I think. And that one was a good book. I can't remember exactly who wrote that one, but that was really good. Ho hopefully it was Clay, so I'm crediting that properly. Um, but uh, with this one, I was like, okay, it's neat. Like, you know, um, I, I like Andy Benton. She's a neat character. We get to see a little bit of her past life with her dad and, you know, wondering why her mom left them. And there was some, so there were some great emotional moments there. Um, but, uh, and then they like the, you know, she's hearing the voices in her head, uh, but that was still not fully done well, I feel like, cause you, you just hear noise at points in, in her and she's like, stay out of my head, stay out of my head. But you don't really know fully, like, is Donna still in there? Like, I mean, she mentions Donna and she mentions Patricia and everything, but it's like, it wasn't like the screen book where there was like four people talking with the letterer doing really interesting things with the font and stuff. Um, I, I wish that was happening in this because that, that gave it, that added more layers to the, the, and it puts you in Andy's head of like the chaos that she hears. Like in this one, she's like talking for three pages, narrating, and then, uh, and, and on the third page, the, the noise starts to come in and she's like, get out, just leave me alone, stay out of my head. And you're just like, okay, but that doesn't put me in her shoes by having one little word box be mumble jumble. Like it worked better when there was just words everywhere, just like invading her head. Uh, because then you can see how exhausting that is. When, and I know that covers a lot of artwork, but you know, it's like, so then simplify it, draw a close up of faces and just have the stuff around. But yeah, so I feel like this didn't handle that as well. And that's what I liked about her miniseries was that jumbledness, that 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 chaos in her head where there's multiple voices and she has to like sift through them to try to, you know, do something simple as, you know, like punching carnage or tying her shoe or something. It's like, that's what I liked. And I was like, oh, I wish that element stayed in this run. So hopefully they add that back in at some point. Um, but the storyline was, it was interesting, I guess, like a, a piece of her symbiote. She tries to kill herself and the symbiote saves her. I kind of like that. She jumps off the bridge where, you know, Gwen Stacy died and where recently Danny Ketch fell off. So that, it's a lot of, ha a lot happens on that bridge. Um, and, uh, and so she like tries to jump off and kill herself, but the symbiote saves her. And then uh, uh, like a piece of her goes into the water though. And there's like a, a boat and like a bunch of dead bodies down there. And, and uh, one of them like stands up and says like, you know, come to me. And they like, they kind of create, for uh you know symbiote looking creatures that are, that are the colors of the life foundation symbiote and they send them after andy to fight and then andy you know fights back and stuff like that and uh, and says there's something familiar going on what's going on here and uh, and then meanwhile you know we have these this creature underwater uh, that has been resurrected and so i'm kind of like all right well what's that that's kind of intriguing not enough for me to probably keep reading monthly uh which i'm probably not going to do I'm, i need to a break uh, because we're going to talk about, like I said, the movie stuff coming up, the sequel and uh, the past, you know, the, the past storylines. And I want to get back into those uh, because those I, you know, I'm more willing to explore and, and see where those go. And we can wrap up our history of Venom ultimately by going through those. But with these new ones, I'm just like, I'm just going to wait for them to come out and trade. So that's how I feel about Scream. I was like, eh, it was good, but I, I'm going to wait till trade. And when the trade goes on sale digitally to reread it, you know, the whole thing through and uh and then also do a discussion video at that time when i when i own it so uh that's how we're going to handle books from now on like new books um because yeah i felt like this was just okay i think my favorite part about this one is that uh andy ends up in a homeless shelter uh trying to sleep and uh, like an old lady kind of attacks her with a knife and then she like you know pushes the old lady away or you know kind of gets away from her and is kind of saved in a way by may parker and it looks like aunt may may actually be like a supporting character i hope at least in the book um because i was like oh that's cool that's actually really neat and she's restarting feast and she talks about how you know the, the company's had its ups and downs but she's trying to keep it going even though the vil you know the villain mr negative turned out to be the guy in charge of it May is still trying to keep the concept going because she always believed in it and it gives her a purpose and something to do, you know, in New York and stuff. So I like that. I thought that was kind of neat too. And uh, I like the aspect of the detectives looking at this weird fish dead body and they were talking about it and they kind of gave us some insight on, you know, the post carnage New York where they were talking about how carnage like, attacked and stuff. And it kind of gave you some insight on some of that. But, um, and then they also mentioned Eddie Brock missing. And that's because he's on Venom Island, I guess, at this point. So this is happening sometime later. Um, so I guess Eddie, you know, Andy, while she was there with Eddie in the final battle, because she teleported in for one panel um, in Venom 20 and in Absolute Carnage 5, you never see her go and have like a closing 
close your conversation with Eddie um, after that event. And uh, and I don't know. I, I feel like that was a moment that should have happened um, for the character Andy, especially with the her miniseries kind of setting up her wanting to go be with Eddie and, and, and give this information to Eddie, which she didn't need to do. So her mission was pointless, um, but also talk to him. And then he could see like, oh, you're the you're the the one that um, Flash Thompson trained. And uh, maybe they could have even had a scene where they were at Flash's tombstone after the event. And, you know, maybe they could have put that in issue one. And who knows, maybe that's still coming up. But at the same time, I'm just like, yeah, there's no closure there with that. And so it just further leads to my frustration or further speaks on my frustration of the absolute carnage event and how they just set things up and just didn't really pay anything off that that mound of dead bodies never paid off you know in any way other than the fact that it lured hulk to the, the battle in a way but that's it but that never came back into the storyline um we don't know what happened with all those bodies and stuff and i don't know it's just like this this series it, it just it's not focused that's the thing it's 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 it was driven by somebody who couldn't focus and who and who had to expand their story but then was after they expanded it they didn't find ways to tether everything back to the point of the story and that's what you should do with an event book or or a big story in general so yeah scream number one i didn't dislike it i thought the art was good and, and I'm, I'm blanking on the artist now i'm sorry because i read it digitally so i don't have the stuff in front of me um but i'll try to put like an image or two up on screen and maybe the title card so that you can see everyone who worked on the book uh because obviously again everyone works hard on comics just because i don't like it it's just my opinion you know don't let it upset you uh i just I just felt meh about this. I was like, oh, okay, it's, it's fine. Like, it's like the, the Absolute Carnage one with uh, Captain Marvel. I was like, eh, it's fine. But that one I felt like served no purpose uh, to the story. This one I was like, okay, this is an aftermath to it. So it serves some purpose. And I, and I do like some of the beats in there. So it wasn't terrible by any means. I just kind of was like, meh, all right, whatever. I, the thing I liked most about the miniseries was all the voices and that wasn't present here. So that to me was didn't pull me in as much as those ones did. So for that reason, you know, I, I'm just kind of like meh about it. So, uh, but yeah, pick it up. It's in stores now if you want to read it yourself. I know we have some Scream fans here uh, that watch the show. So uh, hopefully you're enjoying the book. And if you are, let me know your review of it down below or, you know, link me to wherever you posted your review. I'd love to see it. Um, so last but not least, we have Venom number 20. So I know this is running a little long, this video, uh, but I have a lot to say about Venom number 20, especially because this was the one, like everyone was saying, oh, Donnie Kate said online, this is the issue. It wraps everything up. It, you know, it answer all your questions and, you know, and all this other stuff. And, and I don't know if Donnie Kate's actually said that. I don't follow him anymore. So I, I don't, uh, and I, that's not like, because I, I hate the guy that's, you know, again, when people, I think when they see my reviews and I'm negative about them, I think they, they only hear it in a personal way. And I, maybe I say some things that I should word better so they don't come across personal. So I totally get that. And I'll own up to that uh, if that's the case. Um, so if you ever want clarification, on something that I said uh, that you think sounds negative, you can call me out on it in the comments and I'll respond to it um, because I'm not trying to do that. I, I try. I can very easily divide people on a personal level and a professional level. I'm, I, I do it all the time. Uh, so for me professionally, he just does things and makes choices that I just don't think service the story the best. And that's what it comes down to. Uh, and that's just my opinion. And that's why I'm, I'm negative. But that doesn't mean my opinion's right. Like your opinion is just as valid as mine. And if you love what he did and what he, and if you think what he did services the story, no argument here. Like, <laughs> like you're allowed to think that. I'm not here to, to burst anyone's bubble or ruin anyone's enjoyment of anything. And because I feel like I've been so critical and negative is another reason why I'm going to stop reviewing the books and collecting a monthly because I don't want, I think some people do take it as me trying to burst a bubble and I don't want that. I, I don't want people to feel that way. I'm just here to have fun and talk about Venom. So if my negativity is, you know, on this in particular, you know, bums you out, trust me, there's not going to be much more of it going forward. So, uh, so don't worry about that. Um, we'll just get back to talking about the movie and we'll get back to having fun regarding that. Uh, so, um, and we'll talk about Flash Thompson, which will be fun. So Venom number 20, Again, no digital code. I'm so sorry. Um, you know, but I encourage you guys to go pick up these books yourselves if you're able to. And uh, and if I somehow end up with a digital code, if someone sends me one, uh, we'll give them out in a future episode for you guys. And I'll let you know when that's coming, you know, through Instagram or, you know, post here on YouTube or on Twitter. Uh, so Venom 20, let's let's wrap this up. Uh, this book, I don't know, again, if Donnie Kate said this was going to be the, you know, the answers to things, but it's it's not. I mean, really what this is, is what, it's what it's called a backdoor pilot. Uh, so obviously Donnie Kate set up some stuff with the maker 
and this is going to be spoilers because this part I'm going to probably do a full discussion of. Um, I read this book three times. I read it at midnight last night. Um, and then I read it again at like six this morning when I woke up. Um, and then after I walked my dog, I came back in. And before I started this video, I read it a third time. Uh, just not because I didn't understand anything, because I wanted to be very clear on uh, my, uh, as clear as I can uh, with my memory, as clear as I can on my critiques. Um, so they call this a backdoor pilot. Uh, you know, he set up this maker character uh, who I like. I love Ultimate Fantastic Four. I have that entire run and I like Ultimate Reed Richards. And I kind of like that he turned into a villain. I think that was a neat idea that was done previously. Um, but uh, Donnie Cates has him in his book as someone who is interested in the symbiotes for some reason. Well, in this issue, we do find out why, uh, but this is not a big closure, closure issue. It's it, To me, it, this doesn't even feel like, maybe like six pages of this is an epilogue to Absolute Carnage because those are the pages that focus on Eddie Brock and Dylan. And there is some great emotional stuff there. I know a lot of you guys were really feeling that emotion and I saw your tweets about it and stuff. And I was like, yeah, you know, they're right. I mean, there is a great scene where Eddie is talking to Dylan and Dylan says like, why didn't you save me? Why didn't you care about me? Why'd you leave me with your dad? Uh, he hurt me and, and did all, you know, all kind of stuff to me and abused me. And Eddie was like, I didn't know, you know, that you existed. And I, I'm, I'm sorry for that. And, you know, and I wish Eddie there kind of put blame on the symbiote i wish you know because the symbiote kind of warped eddie's memories so he wouldn't remember what was going on um and so i i wish there was some blame there from eddie on the symbiote's part and maybe the symbiote saying i'm sorry eddie i didn't mean to like maybe the symbiote reacts to dylan crying and saying why didn't you protect me um i would have liked to seen that i think that would have added more emotion to the scene that's the thing with venom is that it's not just eddie brock there is a living creature on him who's just as responsible for most of the things even more responsible now we've learned with the memory altering than eddie brock is so i feel like there should have been some added you know sympathy there or added emotion there from a symbiote from the symbiote reacting and so when people are like oh this was so emotional i'm like well it could have been that much better in my mind again i just feel like the the yardstick that uh is being measured for like how hard people work on these books is not a yardstick at all it's like a it's a ruler that's 12 inches long and i'm just like well the you need a yardstick to you know to do better to reach further to get more out of your story and you're using a ruler every time and uh, and it's it's frustrating because i'm like there's still two more feet you got go <laughs> um and uh, and so when i was reading this that's what i kept thinking of and as an editor too like again i'm approaching things from that standpoint uh yes what i would do that's why i don't like reviewing because i'm more like discussing and i'm more like sharing what i would like to do in that situation or what i wish someone would have added doesn't mean it's right, like I said, always say, and it's not just me going, oh, I wish they did what I want them to do in the story. It's not about that either. I just, I'm trying to look at what services the story the best and what could make it better, you know, in my opinion. And I know everyone does that. So, you know, I'm not being a disingenuous reviewer, but that's also why I don't like reviewing and why I like discussing instead, because then it gives me more freedom to do that without, you know, sounding like a whiny fan who just wants what I want. That's not the case at all. I will accept things for what they are, but I also will look at them and go, well, but it still could be better. And so that scene where he's hugging Dylan, I wish there was like a line from the symbiote going, I'm sorry, Eddie, I'm, I, I, I'm sorry I didn't tell you about Dylan so that you could have protected him this whole time. And I feel just as responsible or more responsible than you uh, about why he got treated that way. Um, so that's the thing, you know, that's, that's why, um, I wish they would just do a little, so I was like, okay, yeah, it was a good scene, but it could have been a little better. So it was like an eight could have been a 10. Um, but that stuff was neat. And I do like the line where, uh, you know, he says, can you do me one favor, Eddie? Uh, you know, now that, or dad, you know, and Eddie's like, sure. What is it? And he goes, can you tell me about my mom? That line was great. And I love Eddie's response. No dialogue. Congratulations, Donnie Cates. Uh, you trusted your artist to convey an emotion uh, in their just their artwork. And so, uh, so when I read that panel and it's just Eddie just smiling and tears coming down his face, I was like, ah. and then it cuts to a splash page of him with his arm around his kid and he goes, absolutely. And I'm like, that's what I'm talking about, Donnie. Like that is really, really well done. So that moment there, I really liked. Um, and I like that little stuff with, with Dylan and everything. Um, and, but now flip to the maker stuff, which was the bulk of this issue it was like 60% of this comic was about the maker through his perspective. And he's talk, he's like, you know, the, in my opinion, one of the laziest ways to wrap up an epilogue is just to have someone sit there and narrate it and just 
literally in an exposition way go through and just you know rap, like okay eddie and like i have a theory about um the symbiotes they only spawn not randomly but dur right before big events so carnage and i will give donny cage credit for this because this is this is a good example of adding to continuity without retconning so he's like all right well carnage first created right before Thanos went and looked for his infinity stones uh, and, and battled, you know, the, the heroes in the infinity war, infinity gauntlet. Um, so that's when carnage came up and it's like, okay, well then um, like raise, you know, and, uh, and uh, uh, what was it? Sh not shriek, but uh, the other one, <laughs> the one, the other one starts with an S it was like th those two um, that they were spawned right before like the chaos war and, and, uh, and the second civil war for Marvel. Um, and, uh, there was like toxin was like right before the Avengers disassembled and stuff like that. And I was like, that's kind of neat. I'm like, oh, I never thought about that. And I got to give Donnie Crate, get Cates and whoever else a ton of credit for uh, coming up with that concept of like, oh, wow, the symbiotes were right before these big Marvel event books. Um, and so that's neat. I was like, oh, wow, I never connected that dot. So like talk about surprising the living hell out of me. I was like, I like that. But then after that, it was just the maker just talking about everything else saying all right well eddie has all those codices in him so i'm like okay so does that make eddie the grendel now because that's what carnage was becoming and that's according to donny cates on twitter so now that all those codices and the carnage symbiote are inside eddie does that make eddie the grendel like is he a sleeper agent now that we don't know of or is he going to become the big threat that spider-man and everyone has to fight or dylan has to fight um to add some emotion to the story like like but they don't really touch on that here and that leads into my frustration where you know donnie will set up a potential concept and then not touch it for like 10 issues just to drag it out and and i'm like ah, i don't you know i don't like that long form decompressed storytelling i like getting i like getting things in each issue i'm paying four bucks for it i like when things happen i like when questions are answered and i know you gotta you know you gotta stretch it out a little bit but i feel like sometimes it stretch out too much so when i was reading this i was like oh please don't let that pop up again in like 10 issues. That'll just be so frustrating. Um, so uh, when I was reading this last part, like, uh, you know, all the maker stuff, I was like, I like the character, but what he's doing here is he's getting, I won't spoil who's talking to him, I guess. Um, not that that's a big spoiler. It was kind of spoiled a little bit on my live stream the other day. I think Eddie's mullet. I, he told me, he's like, I have some spoilers. And I was like, yeah, tell me. But I didn't know they were like the ending of the book spoilers. So I was like, oh, okay. So I kind of knew what was coming um, a little bit. Um, but that didn't interfere my with my reading experience. So basically, uh, he has a mission. He has this project called Oversight, as we learned about before. And he wants to open a dimensional rift back to his home world, the Ultimate Universe. But that's going to be hard for him to rebuild because the Ultimate Universe did get destroyed and it kind of wiped out. And that's why Miles ended up in our world and his mother got brought back. His mother was killed by a symbiote, you know, the Venom symbiote um, in his world. And she was brought back because, uh, you know, there was Molecule Man that, you know, uh, when Miles saw him or met him, he was like, hey, kid, I'm hungry. And Miles was like, oh, and he's like, well, I got a peanut butter and jelly sandwich that's been in my pocket uh, or like a hamburger or something like that. He's like, it's been in my pocket for like, you know, all day <laughs> while I've been fighting crime and monsters. And the Molecule Man's like, whatever, I'll take it. And he takes it and eats it. And he goes, oh, this is the best thing ever. Thank you. And Miles like, like, uh, you're welcome, I guess. And then Molecule Man at the end of the story granted Miles uh, a wish in a way or he, he, he's, he looked inside him in a way and was like, I know what you wish for. I'm going to give it to you. So he let Miles live on our, you know, Spider, our Marvel Universe, the main Marvel Universe, the 616, I guess they call it. And they, he moved Miles there with all of his supporting cast and, uh, and he uh, integrated them into the continuity, I guess. And then he gave Miles his, his uh, mother back. So, um, so yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, uh, neat stuff. And, you know, um, I hope that kind of comes back. Like I hope with this rebuilding of this universe, um, it, it kind of brings some of those elements back. And But I saw, I think it was back in February or something, where Donny Cates tweeted that he would like to reboot the Ultimate Universe. Some fan was like, I, I guess suggested it, like, hey, any chance that, uh, you know, Donny Cates can launch, you know, relaunch the Ultimate Universe on its 20th anniversary next year, which, you know, that's, I think it's like November of 2020 is the is the anniversary of it. And, um, and Donny Cates was like, I'd be down for rebooting that Ultimate Universe. And then I think in an interview after that, he said he's still interested in doing that. So that's what this looks like. This looks like a backdoor pilot to reboot the Ultimate Marvel Universe. And that to me is frustrating. Does it tie into Venom still? Sure. Because he says, um, you know, to this, to the, 
you know, uh, I don't want to say again who he's talking to, but when he's um, talking to them, uh, they have they they say like, well, what has your you know progress been? Because you're trying to reopen your universe and you haven't been successful to like open it long term and go back into it. And he's like, well, the, technically there's really nothing there. So as I'm opening it, it's at different pockets and times of my universe, and I got to figure out a way to you know rebuild it. So the last time I opened a portal to that universe, something came through and it was the, uh, spoiler alert, uh, it was the ultimate Venom symbiote from the ultimate universe, which is not an alien from Clintar uh, or, or from space or anything like that, um, or created by Null or nothing like that. It is a, a full on suit, synthetic suit created by uh, Eddie Brock Jr.'s father and Peter Parker's father. Um, that was their big science experiment was they were making this suit that could traverse different dimensions and potentially work with our antibodies to cure cancer and other ailments and stuff that the human body, you know, uh, develops. So that suit is now in possession of the maker. And that is what kickstarted his interest in symbiotes because it, it got damaged on the process through as it went from that universe to ours. And if you remember in the ultimate universe, the Venom symbiote at one point did just vanish not like on panel where you saw it just blip away but it they just stopped telling stories about it and they never referenced it leading into the final act of the ultimate universe so it just kind of went away so i was like all right well that still kind of fits in that in that way where it could have been sucked from some point in time after it fought uh you know peter and, and miles and stuff so i was like all right that's that can kind of work so the symbiote now is in the care of the maker the ultimate symbiote and that is what garnered his interest in symbiotes in general and why he started Project Oversight is because this suit was damaged and he wants the codices to repair it so that way because even though it's not exactly like um, you know uh, the symbiotes from our universe it still has a lot of similarities to it uh, in some ways um, by, by, uh, by what does he say biologically uh, sorry I was uh, trying to think of the word there uh, he said so it, biologically it does share a lot of uh, these same elements so it wanted to put the codices in it that it was extracting from normie and everyone else and use it to repair this symbiote so that he could go back safely into his world without the, tr the traversal of time and space and multiverse messing with his mind even further. Uh, so that's kind of his plan. And so I'm like, okay, that's great. But, but you know, why is this the wrap up of absolute carnage? <laughs> like, that's what I kept thinking was great. Go do a one shot called, you know, um, the maker, you know, uh, Donny Cates. And uh, why is this, you know, and I get it. Okay, it was set up in Venom and you kind of want to pay it off in Venom or whatever. But to me, I'm just like, why is this in the epilogue, though, to Absolute Carnage? Like, I there's so many things that ended the last issue of Absolute Carnage didn't give us. And it's like, you should have given them to us here. And even still, I'm like, I'm... I like they it really he should have given them to us in Absolute Carnage 5 because we paid $5 for that book. So I didn't want an epilogue either to kind of wrap up everything but that's kind of what this did but as a backdoor pilot to another project he's probably going to work on and that's what just was the clincher for me i was just like i can't support this uh book anymore it, it's so unfocused on so many levels it is it good and have good beats sure but when you pull it back and look at it as a whole which is that's what they want you to do they want you to look at this as look at this big master epic i'm doing uh you know and people are saying oh it's better if you binge read it no it isn't no it isn't not to me it isn't uh when i binge read it i just get more frustrated i'm just like i have now 20 issues of venom and i have all that information in my head and I know all of that happened from issue one to now uh, with all the tie-ins and stuff. I have it all right here and it still frustrates the living hell out of me. So uh, so when I was reading this, I was like, Ugh, no. And then the one thing they do give us kind of a, a more clear um, theory, at least on what Dylan is, which is they said Dylan was uh, born of Anne Wang. So just a human baby. But because Anne had a codice in her from being she-venom, um, that is what bonded with the fetus and made dylan and they and his theory maker's theory is that uh this is because all the symbiotes were born as a precursor to a big event um that's maybe that's what dylan is uh, now the symbiote doesn't think of itself as part of its hive or a symbiote anymore it now thinks of itself as part of the human race because it's been bonded to so many humans and it has such an attachment to eddie and stuff so now that's what the maker is theorizing he says oh now the symbiote it doesn't think it's part of the hive. So this new form that it made, this Dylan, it, you know, uh, that it made uh, in, a, in a roundabout way, 
as a precursor to what's coming next like what is that going to be and it's like obviously we know it's null like that's the other thing it's like in this issue he's like i'm, I'm wondering what it could be it's just like you were bonded to the hybrid uh, symbiotes that were possessed by carnage you should have knowledge of null at this point uh so uh this book uh like <laughs> it's like here are the rules here are the rules Ugh, rules rules stupid rules oh but here are the rules again uh i can't deal with this book anymore it's so lazy and unfocused at times uh great concepts bad executions that is how i summarize this whole run and i know a lot of you guys like that and that's not a personal attack on you it's just my opinion you do not have to agree and my words hopefully aren't upsetting you um in you know you see it from your lens i see it from my lens and my lens says that this book is just a mess on every level it's written by someone who's unfocused, who is doing too many books possibly at once. Maybe he can't handle a three or four book workload. Um, and Venom, I feel, is suffering for that. And I think Absolute Carnage, the event, suffered for that. And I think the editors, um, you know, didn't give their all to keep the continuity going and, and together and to keep the story focused. Uh, they just didn't. And, uh, and, and by expanding it to something bigger, if you're going to do that, come up with a plan and work with the writers to come up with a plan to keep all that coherent and they didn't do it and so so to me i'm like no they you know they're everyone did not give us their best and that's what a, an event book should be even though it's not in most cases most marvel books especially their event books and dc are terrible and that's the frustrating part about it if you're going to do an event book it's sh as jeff johns once said at uh, comic-con after blackest night came out he said our books especially event books should be our it should be all quality and it should be our best quality and uh and i agree it should be and i just feel like most people do not do that they're just like oh it's an event and everyone wants to act like they're rock stars and oh my name's on a book and i'm look how many copies i'm selling i'm so cool and i'm gonna go do these signings and and i'm just the man and everything and and uh it, and it's like no there's more to storytelling in comics than just looking good. Um, I think it was like White Man Can't Jump. It was like a great line where he, uh, Woody Harrelson says to Wesley Science, he's like, you'd rather look good and lose than look bad and win. And uh, and I think that's uh, that sums up a lot of people that works in co work in comics now, where they'd rather not put in the work um, because they know it's subjective. And most people out there are going to love it or hate it. And, uh, and so they're just like, yeah, whatever it'll, it'll be loved or hated. And that's it. Nothing we can do about that. If we try harder, it's still going to be loved and hated. It's like, well, yeah, but so what try harder. Um, that's how I feel about absolute carnage. This event was just enough to drive me away. I am, I am not a butt kisser. I'm not going to sit here and say, I love something when I don't. Um, and, uh, and I'm not just to get, you know, opportunities to like, you know, interview Donnie Cates or these guys. Would I like to talk to him one day? Sure. But I don't know if he'd want to talk to me at this point, uh, because I think I'm probably just too critical uh, on his stuff and that's fine. I mean, you know, I'm, you know, I, I that's a bummer. Cause I think I could maybe learn from him if I got the chance to talk to him. Um, and maybe he could correct me on some things and I'm all for putting my foot in my mouth. Uh, but, um, but from my experience reading this book, it's just like, I can't, support it i can't keep reading it and i'm done reading this book i can't i can't keep supporting uh you know this this run if i'm not enjoying it and i know i'm a venom show but that doesn't mean i have to love everything even the movie i mean as much as i had fun watching it i still gave it a seven i think my initial score was like an eight because i was on like a big high after watching it but after i really studied the film i saw it like three or four times in the theater and i kind of processed it and broke it down um i was like okay now i can give it like a, a real score um, of seven and that was like my final score so even that movie i was critical of um again i'm doing the show here but you know that focus on the character but that doesn't mean i'm gonna sing and love everything but at the same time the show should be about my celebration of the character um but that's where you guys come in i don't like it but you might and that's where the comment section also add to these videos and where your opinions Add to these videos so if you want if you guys want to just flood the comments what you thought of absolute carnage if i get enough comments um, maybe i'll do a video on a live stream uh, where i read your reviews um, and we and you can also comment there too but like maybe i'll do a live stream and i'll get your reviews of absolute carnage and i'll and i'll hear what you like and disliked about it um, maybe we can do that at some point so yeah flood the comments down below if you want uh, and if i get enough of them because i know my videos don't reach that far but if i get enough of them maybe i'll you know uh, make a separate video where i read your thoughts on this and i include you guys 
uh, so that way your voices are heard in these videos as well because that's what I want to do. I want to include you guys. You're just as much of a part of this as I am because we are Venom together. Uh, not just me by myself talking in my room. You guys all contribute too. So let me know your thoughts down below if you agree with me, if you disagree with me. Um, but yeah, I'm a Venom show. I'm a Strictly Venom show, but that doesn't mean I'm going to kiss everyone's butt and love everything that I get. I'm still going to be critical of it. And this series was enough to make me stop collecting Venom altogether monthly. Um, the Double Trouble, all those things that are coming out, the spinoffs and everything. Um, I'll probably buy Marvel Action number 12 because I really like that one. Double Trouble, I'm not going to buy monthly. Um, I'm not going to pick up the individual issues. I'm going to wait till it comes out in trade and then go on sale on Comixology and pay for it that way. I, I'm really going to start thinking about budget for this show next year because I, you know, I, I don't have a lot of money and I have two or three jobs now, but I'm only working them till early January. And then I go back to just having one job and going back to just being broke. So I'd rather spend my money on books that I'm actually enjoying and that I have nice things to say about and uh, and a lot of them are not going to be venom related so i'll probably have to come up with new shows to do that with so uh yeah i don't know we'll we'll see where this takes us but for now issue 20 last issue of venom i'm not going to be doing monthly reviews of this title anymore and some of the other books out there i'm not going to do monthly reviews of ravencroft scream double trouble um i'll just get to all of those in discussion videos where we can talk about full spoilers way after they're on in trade paperback and way after they're on sale at some point on comiXology so Again, let me know your thoughts down below. This video has gone on way long, longer than I thought it was going to be. Um, but uh, I had a lot to say about Venom number 20. I knew I would. And uh, and it just speaks more to my frustration of how this series ended and how it just felt lackluster. And yeah, okay, great. It had some good Eddie Brock moments and, and uh, Dylan moments. Great. But it, it, it was no longer structured um, on a level where it was just about those two. If it stayed more condensed... That, and I, I applaud Donnie for trying to keep the focus on those characters, and that's great. But unfortunately, too many other things were set up that needed to kind of have, be resolved in some way. And, and I know probably what's going to happen is going to be like, well, just keep reading. We're going to touch on that. The pile of dead bodies, we'll get to that. That's going to be part of like a next story and stuff. It's like I'm tired of being strung along uh, and not getting uh, concrete things in each issue to make it worth my $4. I'm I'm done following the smell of the cheese and the maze. Like I'm jumping off, you know, I'm done with this. So, so you guys for who are sticking on for the ride, feel free every month to let me know what you think of the new Venom comics, but I'll get to them at some point down the road for sure. Uh, but thank you guys so much. We're nearing the end of our, our third season here, two years, almost 450 videos. And I couldn't have got here without you listening into me, either whine and complain about books or, or cheer and celebrate books. Whatever it is, you guys stuck with me this whole time, and uh, you've engaged with me, you've liked videos, you've disliked videos, you've commented, uh, you've called me, you know, names, or you or you agreed with me, whatever it is, like, it, it means a lot to have this engagement and to grow um, in my personal life as a person, get better at certain things, uh, understand people with different perspectives in better ways. It's, it's helped me grow a lot. Um, so this show is very important to me, and it's nice that we're reaching this milestone of 450 episodes in just two years. Uh, but I will, after we hit 450, we'll just do live streams like once a week after that for the month of December. And then in January, we'll come back strong with a new intro, a uh, new focus on, uh, you know, Agent Venom and, uh, and you know, his story, Flash Thompson story, into the Space Knight Venom. Um, and then we'll also be talking about any movie news that comes up uh, from here on out. So for now, we'll just cover all that in live episodes, live streams once a week. Uh, but then in January, we'll come back to recorded episodes. So I have three episodes left in the season, 448, 449, and 450. If you have any suggestions of what you want me to talk about in those episodes, let me know down below. And we'll continue our conversation, as always, down there. Thanks so much for watching the show, as always. See you in the future. Peace.